He just likes to listen to Ben Shapiro, my dad. Damn, that rocks. Yeah, he's the king. He f- lit- he fell asleep at the kitchen table watching Facebook videos <laughs> on the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Just has to get worked up into a rage before he falls asleep. Yeah, he'd had like eight glasses of box wine and was <laughs> and was just assed out, just hunched, just hunched over on the kitchen table with a with a like Prager U or whatever Dave Rubin up talking about like <laughs> talking about like critical race theory. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. That's fucking funny. Um, yeah. I, although I'm not sure what's worse, uh, doing that or watching, for willingly watching the two movies that we did. Yeah, watching Mayor Pete and Fauci for no good reason Mm-mm. is probably worse. Oh, fuck. At least he's enjoying that. Yeah. It's lulling him to sleep. Yeah. So com- it's comforting, like a blanket. A hometown boy who went to Harvard and became a Rhodes Scholar, only to return to the city where he grew up. He's also a newlywed. I made Pete promise that we would have fun. This is the only chance you'll ever get to vote for a Maltese American left handed Episcopalian gay war veteran <laughs> mayor millennial. <laughs> anyway, hello everyone. It's Welcome going to. to be Another edition of At the Movies with Tim and JT. Um, <laughs> I al- I always giggle saying that name. Um, <laughs> Me too. It's funny. It's just funny to take it. Yeah, to just steal it. Uh, why not? Uh, anyway, it's been a while. It's been four months to be exact. Uh, I I looked. Oh shit! And, yeah, it's been a long time. But you know. <sighs> we're making money moves you know we got a lot going on uh we're creating a lot of synergies and uh diversifying our portfolios so we've had a lot on our table a lot of a lot of strands in our head so but the movies never stop and especially the two movies that everybody can't stop talking about this year. Folks. I hear a lot of Oscar buzz about these. Folks, th- may, these might, these are the front runners for the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. And I will, uh, I, I will say, I think that one of them, uh, Fauci, may be, uh, may be a Best Picture threat, folks. It may even be able to dethrone Belfast, believe it or not. Um, uh, if I watched Fauci and Belfast in the same day, uh, I think I would. Uh, You'd develop overdose an on optimism. Your disposition would be too sunny. You couldn't handle that kind of positivity. Anyway, yeah. So we have a double feature this time around. Another one. Um, because you know it's it's the Billy bit the Billy not the busy holiday season the Billy holiday season, um, uh, so we've we could only get two movies in, but because uh, JT is too busy seeing Licorice Pizza five fucking times because he's a <laughs> coastal elite bitch. Um, but, he is charged. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. So I was stuck in the house. Like a maid watching Mayor Pete and Fauci are our two uh, documentaries, which are I don't know what I'm gonna call this episode. It's like liberal hero worship documentaries, essentially. Yeah. Um, I don't want to call. I don't know if I want to make the title like liberal propaganda double feature <laughs> because I feel like I'll I'll get grouped in with some unsavory folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben Shapiro videos will be the next. Yeah, uh, fucking A. My, 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 my YouTube video will be in my dad's recommended videos on Facebook. That would be pretty um, funny if conservatives, like, saw if I made it the title, made that the title, and they saw it, and they, like, didn't even watch it, and they were like, this guy owns Fauci in this. <laughs> I mean, I think we will be owning Fauci in we, this. We, uh, I mean, God willing. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I don't know. Two, like, obvious dog shit movies, but... um, Yeah. Fauci, I feel like, leans more into the hero worship side of things. Like, uh, Mayor Pete, like, is a loser. And, like, the documentary in some way knows that. And just, like... Has it? I, I don't know. I don't want to say remarkable because I don't want to give this film really any credit. But like, right. honestly, going into it, I was surprised by how much of an awareness of Pete's personality that has because it's yeah. just like they realize it's non-existent and yes. that they have to like graft a soul onto this man. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of their like campaign strategy is like, okay, so we need to find out a way for you to like project human emotions mm-hmm. we, we need you to find a way to convince people that you are alive just liz smith's fucking screaming at him for being <laughs> like you sound robotic and rehearsed <laughs> you sound like you're full of shit not none, none, none of the none of the people in fucking michigan are gonna vote for you <laughs> and then he'll but say yeah. something identical and she'll be like that was you crushed it but yeah, the hardest it goes in on Fauci is pretty gentle in Fauci. Like, I think there's, like, obviously most critical of his AIDS stuff. And there is a little bit of, like, COVID concern. But a little they give bit. Him, but they they real, give him a they, chance to defend himself. Like, the, it's I was, like Yeah, I was going to say they, they frame pretty much all of the, like, worthwhile. And at, like you said, like, these are all, like, the most softball criticisms of Fauci. All of those are framed in, like, this is, like, he was still right. Like, in the moment, he was doing the right thing. Yeah, and it was a bad call in the long run, but, like, he he had a thought, pro- he, was, he was just following the science. His heart was in the right place, and that place was his big brain with science. Mm. And that's the thing that gets me with Fauci, is that... Because, you know, you can say whatever you want about Fauci, and I'm not really looking to get into the weeds about, like, my personal opinions about Fauci or, like, any sort of the political shit around him as a figure. Mostly because I don't really know all that much about him, and I don't really care. Um, He's, I mean, part of the reason that this movie is dog shit and is that he's, like Pete, just kind of a boring nerd. Um... So I'm I'm not that invested in you know that conversation, but whatever you say, if you, if you say anything that he does has done is like noble or whatever, he's a smart guy and blah blah. blah. Um, it, this whole movie is just an exercise in like affirming his personality. You really don't get that much in the way of like, because I think within the story of Fauci or or like connected to the story of Fauci there is an interesting thing to you know think about which is you know the way that the the American medical establishment has and the scientific uh community has kind of been uh I don't want to say co-opted but ingratiated into the sort of the military intelligence industrial complex the the capitalist complex Um, and like just how like liberal like i i mean i feel like science has become like a very liberal thing like oh like especially like obama it's become another culture war uh yeah it's a culture war appendage And, uh, like, I mean, you definitely associate that, I feel like, with Obama era. It's just, like, we're doing this because it's, like, scientific and sensible. And, like, liberals, I feel like their version of the owning you with logic and reason kind of a thing. Yes, we're the smart ones. Science, like, we follow science and not God. And right. just like uh, that's what's uh, I, I don't know having a sense of moral superiority or that like a belief in the fleeting knowledge that we have in the world like uh, um, is uh, more important in whatever kind of way. The thing that just uh, was the most because obviously both of these and I kind of want to focus on Fauci first because I think I have more to say about Mayor Pete and I I think. 
obviously this is all very like marginal because both of these movies suck ass and were a slog to watch um i think i liked mayor pete a little bit more yeah um, it's it's slightly better and it just more it's like a more nuanced like for one thing it's it, it, funnier there's some funny stuff not always intentionally but there are some very fleeting moments and I'll, we'll get into it more in a little bit but yeah but fauci's just like Fauci is just an entirely paint by the numbers documentary all the way there, and like made and for babies in terms of like the music cues and how it's put together and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really a coherent story. It's just kind of like, look at this great guy. Yeah. Um, and the thing that bothered me so much is that again, like obviously both of these are, uh, again like puff pieces about their subjects. Um. And I think a lot of like liberals and liberal critics would uh, point to a lot of the stuff in this movie about the AIDS epidemic um, as a positive because it gets into some critiques of Fauci. It shows like his flaws or whatever, ostensibly. Although, like we said, they're all framed still in like uh, assuming that he was right the whole time or had like the best interest in mind. Uh, and also does not get into any of the details of, like, the administration that was directing this. Like, it's not like, you know, one of the things that, you know, the movie puts forward is, like, well, it wasn't entirely Fauci's fault that, like, a, a good drug couldn't be developed immediately. But, like, the people in charge of him very much had ideological and political reasons for not wanting to really care about this. Exactly. And that is where that anger was directed, and the movie doesn't get into the details of that at all. And to the extent that it does, and this is the case with everything, everything that afflicts, uh, you know, uh, and we're talking about, you know, like, viral diseases and epidemics are like the main subject matter of the movie uh with mainly covid and aids but they also talk about ebola and all of this is framed all of these moments are punctuated by how they made tony fauci feel and that's what really bugged me where it was like when they were talking about the it, with Bush when they had George Bush who I was not expecting to see as an oh, interviewee yeah. in this movie George um, Bush and Bill Gates Oh my god the 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 whole plane gang is there But Bush shows up and they do the thing about the vaccines for uh AIDS not the vaccines but the treatment for AIDS in Africa um under the Bush administration, that moment, the thing that that story of that process of treating people in Africa for AIDS, uh, the thing that that all crescendos to is when Fauci uh, talked about doing it, that both Democrats and, Rep or when Bush talked about doing it, that both Democrats yeah. and Republicans clapped, and that at the UN, everyone clapped for him when, when he proposed it. And uh, and this is something that ties these two movies together, and I'm sure when we kind of wrap up, we'll get into how this ties into just liberal politics in America in general, and liberal political culture, um, which is uh, the most valuable thing for a, a marginalized or, you know, uh, an afflicted person in our society is to be heard that their story is heard because Pete's whole thing throughout all of this, uh, throughout his whole movie is starting a conversation. Like when the, when he's <laughs> talking to all the black people at the town hall in South Bend and they're all just saying very true things about him. And, uh, and he's, and they're like, okay, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, Please yeah, I just want to hear people. you. What are you gonna do? Just, and he just goes, tell like, me what's I just up. Want, I just want you all to know that you are seen and you are heard and you are valid. And uh, and with Fauci, it was like you know, uh, you know, it didn't really fix completely what happened. But the good news, the good thing is that he listened to the gay people. Uh, it's like and, yeah, and it's like, like with with the Fauci thing, there's like uh, with medicine and whatever, and like actually being connected to the communities you're trying to help. 
there's again like some validity to that or some value to that whatever whatever but again in the context of this puff piece movie on disney plus you know it's just it's yeah, kind th- of I nauseating mean, it like it depicts like events like especially um related to aids as i feel like net positives that are made in humanity and i think that's like certainly true like i do think that Fauci, to some extent, has played, like, an important role um, in historical events. And, like, with what you're getting at about, like, listening to communities that are afflicted by um, disease is, like, very vital in terms of understanding it. Um, But it's stripped of, like, any character or, like, political context. Like, there is just, like, especially with the AIDS crisis stuff where you're talking about, like, how, like, we get the feeling of like AIDS activists being like frustrated and like whatnot. It's just like from Fauci's perspective, it's like, Oh, they're just like, they're angry at like us scientists who by golly, we don't have any, like we're just in the middle of this kind of a thing. And I don't, so much of this movie is not equipped to characterize why people get angry in these situations Mm -hmm. and like why like i mean obviously the movie is about fucking like fauci but um there is just like bullshit like little sad moments where it's like oh people are calling him and threatening him it's like oh that's sad and scary but it's just like or, or like and people not trusting the science on COVID, I feel like, is a, is a common line or, like, something that's, like, vilified. And it's just, like, there's no, like, these this class of people just doesn't understand, like, how some people work. Like, oftentimes the most disenfranchised people work mm-hmm. where it's just, like, they're suspicious of the government and like the systems around them because they haven't worked for them. And it's just Mm -hmm. like, these are like, I mean, I feel like it harkens back to like Comey rule bullshit, but like mayor Pete and Fauci are like guys that the system really worked for. And they have this, like, I don't know. Liberals like liberals love this, like just wet dream of like the moral civil civil servant who is yeah. just like a guy who's just like oh man change is going to happen slowly but like we're going to do it and we're going to listen and no one gets upset and An no one is angry hero yeah and it's just like th- that i think um in both of these movies like incredibly frustrates me because it characterizes like centrist like liberals and like the neoliberal project in general and how they can invalidate like the voices in groups that they try and like claim to represent or want to care about it's just like okay like why are you so angry and heated about this issue and it's just like because hearing people doesn't fucking do anything it doesn't address any of the structural problems and it's just like why the fuck should people be forced to like take on bourgeois politeness in like i mean with mayor pete like with the aids crisis like it's like when their communities are like being destroyed it's like why is there this like fucking yuppie liberal expectation that it's just like oh we're gonna sit around and hold hands and have a conversation like that doesn't i I don't know that is that's the most infuriating part of both movies yeah, well, that's the thing is that it demonstrably leads nowhere because that's been yeah. the cultural line for my whole life, at least. Yeah. And like, and, and nothing is different. And in fact, in many crucial ways, things are worse. It's just like so perversely reducted and limited in scope where yeah. it's just like, and in a way where it's like they're being like the teacher that knows better than you, where it's mm-hmm. just like, Look, like that, like I think, like I think it's in Fauci where he talks about, like, um, when he's talking to activists, he's like, that's just not how things are in Washington, like, kind of yeah. a thing, and like explaining the politics like that. And I think that, like, it just like keeps things mystified. It's just like you can't change that. It's like you have to accept that as a given, but right, like, that process why. is is uh immutable. Yeah, uh, it's just a, a part of nature. Um, yeah, no, that uh, exactly. And what you just said reminded me of 
something in the AIDS thing that in the AIDS section of this movie, which this movie, I really I think a majority of the movie is about the AIDS uh, yeah, crisis. Yeah. Honestly, um, when Fauci's like, uh, so I ha- I had this moment of realization about why these people were angry. It's because you know you try to tell them like I'm sorry, but with with the science, you know, just I I keep going to their act up meetings with uh with big charts and going but the data and they don't know they don't listen to me <laughs> and, and he's like and i had a realization that these people are like yeah you tell me that it's gonna take two to five years and i've been given a prognosis of 18 months to live i don't fucking care i just want something now i want to live and it's like yeah dummy people want to fucking be alive <laughs> you're a doctor i mean both mayor pete and uh, Fauci are just two characters that feel like I mean well, Fauci is certainly say, more Pete human, is but the, are like yes aliens. Yes, but Pete is. The, I was about to say Pete is the same thing because there's a bunch of moments in that where he's like, yeah. And then when I was 34, I learned that it feels bad to get killed by cops, and it's like, I I don't know and and the thing and I guess we can segue into Mayor Pete because there's not really much to say about the actual content of yeah, the Fauci and I mean, movie. Yeah, and I feel like we'll hop we hop back and We've forth. We've already like, been kind th- of This is like going more of a forth. fluid discussion. I feel like where it merits comparing and contrasting rather yeah. than just like ragging on one or the other. Yeah, because these movies shit. essentially do the same thing in pretty much the same way. Yeah. And reflect all of the same troubling things but um i i think the thing that makes me enjoy mayor pete a little bit more than fauci is that like we said it's a little bit more knowing because there are uh for, i mean there are open like acknowledgments of the fact that he does not have a human personality yeah um and but there's also some moments where it seems that the filmmakers are i mean i think the people who made this movie like totally buy mayor p oh absolutely um, they are clear supporters yes like uh where it's just like because there's that whole like a lot of the movie gets like uh really behind the fact that like people got swept up i mean like a very small percentage of people got like swept up in boot edge edge fever and uh he became like the hot yeah, big like, candidate which yeah, like, literally happened to every like every candidate at everybody, some point during that had cycle a little moment had like their that. like it moment and his just happened right right when the voting was kicking off yeah, I mean, oh my god. I mean, we could make this episode uh, two hours long if I wanted to talk about the whole fucking 2020 primary. <laughs> In fact, before I make whatever fucking po- dumb point I was gonna try to make about these movies, which I'll probably get back to later, let's just talk about some stuff in this movie. Because this movie, I, I actually kind of had some fun watching this, uh, watching Mayor Pete. Because um, for one thing... Uh, Pete Buttigieg is very funny. And more so, I like watching this... Um, because I feel very bad for Chasen, or I guess it's Chastin. They yeah. say Chastin in the movie. I was under the impression it was Chasen. Don't don't know. Uh, <laughs> but a uh, fake name. But um, I I feel I feel kind of bad for Chastin. I think. He, yeah. No. I mean, he's, he's like just it's... A, he's just a cute, awkward gay guy, and he really wants to have like a normal human relationship and he married uh the t-1000 of the democratic party yeah exactly who gets caught up with someone who has like just demon energy to like to of self-aggrandizement where they want to like go from being like a shitty fucking small town mayor to running for president because they think they have their right right credentials on their report card and like are then baffled when like oh there's nothing to connect to like there's one thing uh, part where like pete talks about like for some people like his sexuality is everything in the campaign and for some people it's like not a factor at all and it's just like that is i think part of the problem is that it's just like these liberal like these contemporary like obviously the democratic party is in a moment of like crisis with trying to figure out like 
an, a main like identity for like what the new face of the party is going to be. Yeah. And it's just because it's like, they're like completely like complete voids, like such vacuous people where it's like Pete just wants anyone to be able to project any aspect of themselves onto him. So he has no choice but to be like a b- complete blank slate and like yeah. can ru- not open up or there's no singular vision. He's not like he doesn't have anything that he stands on other than just like hearing everyone and then like coming to a like of a, a uh, like average like consensus decision about it. And it's just like, that's not, there's no vision there. It's not politics. It's like, you're not, you can't excite anyone on being so vague that like you, it involves like an amount of projection. This is like also a fun little window into like democratic campaigning because, you know, the whole time he's trying to figure out like, okay, I'm gay. So what is the best way to connect my identity to the identities of other identity groups. Yeah. And that's pretty much all they got going because, uh, like you said, he has no real political vision. Nowhere in this movie do we get any sense of his political ideals or, like, any specific policy or program or projects that he, or anything yeah that he like thinks should be done it's just kind of like uh it's really where we're at in politics broadly but especially in democratic politics where it's just uh it's politics as branding where it's like uh, he, the pete campaign the struggle of the pete campaign in this movie is like how do we find the best tone to uh, market this guy as the next guy for the party. Uh, The film glosses over uh, two things that are kind of crucial to understanding the lack of uh, real uh, continuing support for Pete, which is uh, the fact that they do mention both of these things very briefly, other people do in the movie, uh, of the fact that during the primary, his uh, numbers among black voters nationally was like single digits. Oh, he awful. he appealed almost exclusively to uh, white college-educated suburban people, which, to be fair, is a big, big chunk of the Democratic party uh primary voting base oh absolutely yeah so you know that did give him an edge but uh you know in the more electorally powerful southern states uh that's not quite the case Um, yeah wasn't enough to do it for him yeah uh the other thing that they gloss over but do mention is the the uh, meeting billionaire donors in wine caves thing, which was a, a real blast from the past, from the 2020 campaign trail. All that shit feels so quaint now. Yeah, uh, no, it really, it's so it really, funny. really sucks that I'm like nostalgic for like the fall of 2019. Um, but, uh, but I am. I, yeah. I had a lot more. I had a lot more verve and and joie de vivre then. <laughs> Uh, I I have I have no jouissance anymore. Uh, <laughs> so no, there is, and certainly I mean, no like, hope. It's interesting to see like that point in time captured from like a perspective that like I hated at the time and was like totally totally like alienated from. Like, uh, it's just fun. Like the way it presents, like especially like with some of Sanders' success in that too like it's the classic like liberal critique of him that is solely apolitical where it's just like you don't have to be an angry old man like why yeah. are you angry pipe down like <laughs> come on man why, why are you, are you being so angry? divisive that's th- like that's not you can't come into a conversation if you're angry the conversation stuff like completely like I, that rhetoric which is just like again like i feel like it makes sense that we return to this but because it's one of the most infuriating parts of the 
of both movies, but mm-hmm. it's just like you're ignoring like the power dynamics involved in that. In like yeah. because it's like someone is the one party has the power and is deciding to let the other people come to the table there. And yeah. I think that like in like having those conversations, like certainly uh the Mayor Pete like sort of town hall thing that he whiffs um after uh people are upset about the police officer shooting. Um Oh yeah, like, a huge L on that one. Yeah, it's just like they he's completely like trying to ignore that he's like a part of the structure that did it. Like it's yeah. just like sort of like sorry. Like and it's just it's what so, happens when you're mayor. It's uh so condescending that like yeah. to- conversational tone because when there is a real problem to fix there's like when there's a real problem to fix it's just like the best thing they can do is sort of just try and address feelings. Mm-hmm. And it's like that doesn't Yeah, make do you feel anything. valid for feeling angry. And I yeah. think that's where well, I I think that's where we're at and not to get too deep into like uh, you know, a thesis about all this stuff, but I would love to hear a thesis about all this stuff. I think the thing that makes this stuff um worth looking at in terms of trying to like understand uh, where uh, American like political culture is at. I think to get the to understand like the cynicism of the Democratic Party, you have to be of the opinion of which I am and which I think is just the truth, which is that the Democrats are sort of a controlled opposition party um, who for at least the last uh, 40 to 50 years, they're purpose has been to uh basically be like capture and kill for class consciousness um you know if if you accept that the republican party is kind of the the modern republican party is kind of the the id of capital like the whims of the uh of of the capitalist class sort of just un uninhibited uh, for the most part, uh, the Democrats as the opposition are, whenever they're in power, like for right now, for instance, um, they basically just exist to tell you why, even though they want to, they can't help you, um, for whatever reason. Yeah. And, uh, this is what happens when that's your thing for 40 years, is that, uh, and over the course of that 40 years ever since the late 60s in on both sides of things american politics has been increasingly and i would say now all pretty much completely dominated by culture war and cultural and social uh debates uh, and most things, even things that may masquerade as economic or have real material consequences, are boiled down to cultural affectation. And this is what I was trying to get at with the whole thing about, like, uh, everything in the Fauci movie boils down to how everything made him feel. Yeah. Um, and that that's the sort of central thing. Because, again, within the Fauci story, there is some interesting things to mine that these this kind of movie is not obviously not interested in um because the point of these is not like uh, certainly if you're someone who's on the fence about dr fauci the fauci movie is not going to make you feel different in fact it will probably make you more yeah suspicious. you'll probably you'll probably hate him like you'll probably double down on every horrible thing you think i had like i would say for. like really no opinion about fauci going into the dog me too like i was just like okay this guy for whatever reason has just kind of become the face of like covid like stuff and so yeah. i was like I know, who fucking cares but but i by the end of the movie i actively disliked him i was like Fuck yeah now guy. i'm like oh he's annoying yeah uh but yeah no so it is for people who are already captured by the personality, and it is just that, uh, which is why it's funny when liberals get into the whole Donald Trump cult of personality thing, because what is Obama? Yeah. In terms of 
having a cult of personality because that's all it is, is that you get involved in the personalities. And the thing that's so crazy about people like Fauci and Mayor Pete is that their personalities are fucking dog shit (laughs) and nothing. And so you have to just add things where there isn't anything in uh, Fauci's case. It is, I guess, that you want to fuck him, uh, because they do touch on that. The the people who, man, what the fuck in the in the summer of COVID, we had a wave of like middle aged Democrat moms. Oh yeah, saying they just, wanted to just... fuck in succession. Anthony Fauci and Andrew Cuomo, just like it's the heat of uh, the and, summer, man. You get horny in the summer. They're just and clips specifically for those in the wind. Italian guys. Yeah, and like Fauci is like a decent looking guy, um, especially when they show him when he's younger. I was like, oh yeah, you you look like a strapping young lad. Yeah, you know, he, yeah. I can understand that. But now, I mean, he's like fucking eighty now. Like, yeah, what, no, he's an like, eighty year old man. Like, why did like, anyone weird. Want to fuck this dying old he, man? Yeah, you know, like what? And then, and then Andrew Cuomo looks like a fucking hound, and yeah. it's like, like I don't know, I don't know, man. I don't know what the people with blue wave emojis and their Twitter names. They got mm-hmm. something going on. I feel like that's like a pretty like accurate. Uh, summation of like the whole project basically what you were getting at and like politics um, to a large extent being like a cult of personality and then trying to build liberal heroes of people that have like a severe lacking of personality well it's the same thing with James I mean, Comey think... he's just like a boring nerd exactly exactly I mean I think like Fauci has like a little bit more like actual accomplishment to like graft stuff onto sure that made it easier than pete but like i don't know i think with what you're touching on there um going to like the primary related stuff and like the future of the democratic party um with the general character of the democratic base voter especially yeah. someone who would support bernie and then just later just vote Joe Biden because, like, ultimately there's no, like, really strong ideological, like, connection there. I mean, it's just, like, I do think that, like, these documents show who still has the reins of power in that settings. And, like, whereas in 2019, like, I certainly would have been optimistic that you could... Uh, change the character of that it yeah. seems with like the election of Joe Biden and just like these the fact that these characters have become like uh, Comey, Fauci uh, Mayor Pete have become like lionized um, yeah. liberal figures just shows that there is like there's no willingness um to change change course like we're going to yeah. stick with like a failing notion of like liberal hero worship or in terms of like building like icons like because at one point i think like um democratic hero worship was even more in the radical realm of things like at least yeah. in like 60s 70s like 80s maybe even the 90s like more lib centered political movies i think would give it up to like more left wing characters yeah. but now there's a reluctance like even just like beyond this like what was the um uh the black panther movie that came out um within the last year few years uh, judas and the black messiah yeah yeah it's like now there's like when they approach figures like that there's like a sanitization that happens um, yeah. with it, and I think that both films just show the way the way things are going to continue to go. Where it's like these strategies of like having a conversation or like not really addressing any problems because it's just like they're only there to like stop Republicans to a point. Is just like they're going to continue to be that because it's like yeah. either make a more radical left-wing change or like it felt like with such a crowded primary field 
that it was like trying to answer the question of where does the Democratic Party go next? And no one really could. So well, and that this is what we're left with. And you, you, uh, and you said earlier. You you mentioned how you know the the party, and I agree, is in a period of crisis of trying to figure out who the face of the party should be. And it's I think it's telling and funny and appropriate, and probably should have been what we all were banking on the whole time. Even though at one point in at the beginning of 2020, it looked like he was dead in the water. With Joe Biden, uh, they they who's the new face of the Democratic Party? Well, it's the old rotting corpse of the party of the last fifty years. That's yeah. the face. And For the right only now, like endearing quality to him is that he was connected with the cool guy president, right? Like the, exactly. Uh, the one the, that we all the still one like. good Dem, yeah. Right. So, like. And I think all of them, including maybe Biden himself, are aware that that's going to wear off. In fact, it pretty much already is, uh, that that effect. And so they're going to have to figure something out. And right now, at least as far as uh, Democratic Party like strategists and stuff are, are concerned, it's between Kamala and Pete. And that's a pretty grim state of affairs. Um, because as we've said, Pete is a black hole of charisma (laughs) and, uh, and Kamala Harris is, uh, just, just too tweaked out and weird. People, uh, people don't like her. She, she dropped out pretty early. She was polling like sixth in her home state. So, uh, it's not very good. And what they don't fucking show in this movie is the part where Barack Obama called him to tell him to drop out right before... Yeah, uh, they just get the thank you call. Super Tuesday. Yeah, they get the thank you call. But yeah, no, that's the whole thing, is that Pete was... He won, I mean, not in terms of actual votes, but he won the Iowa primary and... Uh, Bernie won the next two. Biden was like fourth and fifth in all of those, and then he Biden swept South Carolina, and then like that weekend, uh, Pete and like Yang and Klobuchar were all called by Obama. Most of them, from what I remember, were like offered the vice presidency, which is super funny. Yeah, so just hilarious. call everybody who's let everybody that isn't Bernie uh and Biden and just be like, hey, we'll let you be VP if you drop out right now and endorse Biden. And then <laughs> don't give it to any of those people. Like, that's so funny. Uh, I don't know. Obviously that whole the Mayor Pete documentary doesn't get into any of the like actually interesting things that went on in the 2020 primary because it's about pete and again just like with the fauci movie you you don't really get a whole lot of the actual context of anything going on but because it's about the guy it's supposed to be this is something that you know is made for people who like these guys and they pop this on and they watch it and they go i'm such a good person yeah i was I, right these guys I are good love guys fauci he's so smart and whenever i listen to him on the television i know that i'm smart i know i'm smarter than all those other people and pete uh he he's he's so calm and charming <laughs> i knew some people in my actual life who thought that pete Buttigieg was charming and i'm like what are you do you do you talk to like cardboard boxes every day <laughs> like what do you mean what do you mean char but i think it's just because he he got the obama cadence kind of yeah i mean he was just a polite he's just the polite nice guy like yeah it's a uh, i don't know i it's i get how it could appeal to nerds I mean, it's like we kind of what we started when we were talking about the Comey rule uh, yeah. last year, where you know it, it's the the again the liberal hero worship, um, and uh, this one especially with Fauci especially was a nauseating one because it's about 
COVID, which is like still happening. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, it, it it's even more sour, like the, the ending of the Fauci movie where he's walking in DC in the field. Of- and I mean, Hey, things aren't cooked for Pete yet. He has a, he's still got to have high, high hopes for a living. He's, you bet he does. But I, yeah, he's, he's the secretary of transportation. He's transporting shit. And, uh, and he, he might be the, the, the next guy who knows, but, uh, the part at the end of Fauci where he's walking with the like hundreds of thousands of flags oh for all God. the people who died and he's, and he's like, and it's that part. And again, with the shit where it, and it all leads up to the very end of the movie is him being like, I think when I, I would like, you know, when people look back in history at my life they go that guy was pretty good and that's the end that literally yeah no it goes to credits after that and it's like what a after seeing, way after seeing all these things uh, all these flags representing all these dead people of covid mm-hmm. and be and him being like well we learned a lot yeah and well i hope like for like this me. thing again that's still fucking going on and it's just like how do you watch this and not just want to like jump into a pit like, how do you feel any hope or, like, goodness about stuff? Sometimes yeah. I wish I was dumb. It is pretty bleak. It is. Yeah. Uh, the I did feel a lot bleaker at the end of Fauci. Yes, and, I mean, we didn't get into any of this because it doesn't matter. But, obviously, like, as movies... Yeah, no, are, they're, the, they're devoid of style and form. Are just yeah, like, these are these just are like, just throwaway trash. Two different, like, document, like, I'd say, like, Fauci is more just, like, traditional, like, talking head stuff. And, like, yes. Pete does incorporate those style of interviews. But it's, like, it's, calling it, like, cinema verite would be too much of a compliment. But, like, it just no, follows them around. All very, I mean, you're dealing with subjects that are... are there's a required amount of explanation for all of these scenes that has to happen. Yes, and also you're de- you're dealing with people that are like very much aware of their being on camera all exactly, the time. Exactly, exactly. And like, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, there you go. Those were two shit ass movies. Uh, no one talk about any political shit in the comments. I don't care about what you think about anything. Um. <laughs> And uh, next time, hopefully in January, we're going to try to go back to doing these once a month. Hopefully things will wind down yeah. soon. Talk about something um, good. Hopefully, yeah, we'll have something. We'll have a, hopefully a couple more movies than two. I'd like to do more than a double feature next time if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll hope we'll 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 get some good flicks together because because this was i mean i put off watching the fashion movie for like three weeks oh yeah it's i just uh, i didn't no one wants to do that i just don't want to think about it it's just but anyway so there you go uh yeah thanks for thanks for listening everybody happy holidays uh oh i guess i'll plug i was on extended clip uh the extended clip the podcast that jt is on is about to end forever um they, there's only a couple episodes left and i was on one very recently i talked about m night Shyamalan movies specifically the happening and after earth and how they're actually good loser so uh <laughs> go check that out and you can hear us talk about those movies it was a very good time yeah it was and you can and you can listen to other extended clip episodes but i'll i'll link that one in the description because it's got me in it um yeah, any, anything you want to say at, at the end here? Um, just have a safe and responsible holiday, everyone. Oh, and to all the women out there. <laughs> uh, I'll cut that. <laughs> okay. Do it because you care. When you're involved in a race to stop a horrible disease, you always feel you're not doing things quickly enough.